Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game to Come video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Wolfenstein 2's executive producer, who has commented on the Xbox One X. Then we're going to move over to the Firefox hardware survey. Of course, Steam hardware surveys have been well known to tell us that NVIDIA have the largest share of the GPU market when it comes to gaming. But Firefox hardware surveys, the numbers turn themselves on the head in a very interesting way. And then finally, we'll discuss AMD AIBs and custom Vega cards. A number of people have been asking me about custom Vega, so this seems to be a good time to talk about it. Anyway, first things first, Wolfenstein 2. And as I said, this interview is... Uh, primarily about the entire experience of Wolfenstein 2 because it was actually conducted by the official Xbox magazine. This is the UK version, which is issue 158, for those who are curious. And I'm probably going to butcher the poor individual's name when I say it to you, but I think it's Jerk Gustafsson. Uh, that might be incorrect, though. He is, as I said, Wolfenstein 2's executive producer. And given it is the Xbox official magazine, questions immediately arose, of course, of how powerful the Xbox One X is. He says, and I quote, it's a very, it's a super powerful machine, and Wolfenstein 2 runs really, really well. It looks fantastic on the Xbox One X. The focus has been to make sure that we can present the game in the best possible way and use the console and the power that the new console provides. Of course, everything from lighting and graphics overall, in terms of visual quality, it's a lot closer to high-end PCs than regular consoles. He also added that he does believe that the Xbox One X will change the industry, at least somewhat. He says, yeah, I hope so. If you have the possibility to develop and deliver games that will run an a 4K resolution and look fantastic, of course you want to take that opportunity. It will set a new standard for games moving forward, end quote. Of course, what we've seen of Wolfenstein 2 on the Xbox One X so far, it does actually look really close to very high-end PCs. Personally, this is one of those games, even though it does run at 60 FPS on the Xbox One X, personally I would rather play it on the PC, simply because of mouse and keyboard, but that's my personal preference. If you're looking at it from a pure graphical standpoint, I have to say that the system does do Wolfenstein 2 very much justice. Oh, and while we're on the subject of Wolfenstein 2 and the Xbox uh, One X, as well as Xbox in general, there is a rather large sale which is going on at the moment, which is being conducted by Microsoft, and huge savings are on a plethora of games. And I'm certainly not going to read all of them out, because I'll be here for way too long, but you've got Assassin's Creed Origins, which is like 30% off, Doom, which has 33% off, Dead Rising, which has 60% off, uh, Dishonored, the complete collection, which has Dishonored 1, 2, and Death of the Outsider, which is 60% off. Dragon Age Inquisition is like $10. Um, you've got Gears of War 4, which is $19.99. That's 50% off, which also gives you the game on the PC as well. Metal Gear Solid 5, uh, which is also um, over 30% off. Mass Effect Andromeda, 60% off. Uh, also Resident Evil 7, if you're yet to pick it up on consoles, it's currently $30. Rise of the Tomb Raider, the 20th anniversary version, uh, $20. And also The Evil Within uh, 2, which is $30. And finally The Witcher 3, which is $20. Oh, actually also mentioned Titanfall 2, which is also $20. As I said, there is a lot more games besides that. Oh, and I might as well also throw in Wolfenstein 2, which is... $30 as well. As I said, there is a lot more games than that, but <clears throat> this is more of a public service announcement rather than telling you, you know, every single game that's available on offer. Anyway, um, so Steam Hardware Surveys then. Typically, when talking about market share, Steam Hardware Surveys are the de facto way to say that NVIDIA are on top or AMD are on top or Intel are on top. It's basically market share. There are a couple of caveats, of course. For one, Steam Hardware Surveys, as you can imagine, they can only survey, uh, well, systems they're installed on. And the second caveat is that the systems they are installed on generally are going to be for gaming. But... 
Firefox is more of a... It's more of a, a typical usage scenario. It has a much wider audience. Now, what's rather interesting about this is that Intel destroy the competition when it comes to market share. They have over 65%, 65.39 to be exact. However, AMD are actually second. They're 15.4% and NVIDIA, very close, 14.16%. Uh, in other words, AMD in this particular hardware survey do have an advantage. I might as well also mention the processor. So processors, AMD have 12%. Intel have 88%, which isn't surprising given Intel's domination of late of x86. Hopefully, we'll start seeing that change. Now, Windows 7 still has the largest market share. It's got 46%. Windows 10, 34%. Windows XP, yeah, uh, 1%. Windows 8.1, I don't actually know what I'm finding sadder, uh, is 8%. Mac has 5% and other be 6%. And finally, Flash, well, 66% of, of these installs had Flash. I won't read out all of this information. It will be available uh, in a link in the description. Another fascinating insight, at least I find it fascinating, you might not, but I find it fascinating, is that the average system, um, actually 70% have two cores. And... Um, a lot of systems do have four cores, however, and this has obviously been going up. In fact, you can see that this has steadily uh, gone up in terms of numbers, and that's rather interesting to me. So hopefully, um, this is going to be something that is going to increase, like core counts. <coughs> clock speeds have been fairly steady, but as we all know, clock speeds are not really that important now. What I find rather interesting, however, is memory. The reason I find memory interesting is because you can literally see just how the 8 gigabytes, which was, um, you know, about 15% back in April of last year, has suddenly spiked to 21%. And also 4 gigabytes has been going up as well. Whereas uh, you can also see a fairly reasonable incline for 16. However, the de the decline for others or the you know the other graphs are quite low and three gigabytes and two gigabytes have just been declining and declining and declining and what I also find quite fascinating is the rather large influx of Windows 10 it is absolutely just just you know it's not quite 45 percent angle but it's pretty damn close and you've got like 17 percent back in as I said. March um, of last year, and currently it's uh, November, obviously, of 2017, and that means that we're up to 34%. So in other words, basically it's doubled its market share in, let's call it 18 months, which is pretty damn impressive. Now there is a lot of other stuff that we could ascertain from this, but as I said, you can feel free to check that out yourself. What I will say is a lot of people are arguing that this report is more accurate, this report is less accurate. Honestly, it kind of depends on your perspective of accuracy. For example, um, do you consider it inaccurate if you're not talking about gaming? For example, mining. There's a lot of mining systems which possibly have Firefox installed, but they probably don't have Steam installed. There's also likely a lot of high-end business systems. These could have Fire Pro graphics cards. These could have Quadro graphics cards. These could have whatever. You know, they could absolutely be behemoth systems. And guess what? They don't have Steam installed. You could have a system which has a ridiculously powerful uh, CPU, ridiculously powerful GPU. It could, for example, in theory, have 12 Vega cards. And each of those Vega cards is being dedicated to specific virtual machine tasks but it doesn't have Steam installed. Now, does that mean that that doesn't count? I don't know. I mean, it really depends on your point of view. That if you're looking at it strictly from optimization and a gaming market share, then you can't take these uh, figures into account. However, if you're looking at it as the whole market, then you can take these figures into account. You'll also spot a gradual decline on both AMD and NVIDIA's range of discrete graphics cards and in fact Intel has slightly seen an uptick over the past 18 or so months. Now 
you can make of this multiple different things, but the most obvious, of course, is that lighter devices are becoming more popular. This, once again, is a way to differentiate these results with Steam, because, once again, these results are for the average user, or for users who are not necessarily gaming, therefore, owning a high-performance discrete graphics card is not necessarily something you want to do in, for example, a laptop. Whereas on the other hand, if you want to play the latest and greatest games, for example, you're interested in playing Wolfenstein or what have you, then you don't really just want to go with an integrated solution. And I do find it uh, quite an interesting difference because there's also the fact that the JPR market share report, which by the way is released on a quarterly basis, has never been too close in line with Steam hardware. In fact, to say it's not been too close is a massive understatement. However, JPR's market share report is much closer in its uh, numbers than uh, with the Firefox hardware report. So it does appear that these numbers are at least looking like they have some level of correlation. And worth, uh, worth also noting... Don't forget that this is over a large swathe of devices, so this is not just desktop. This could be, let's say, uh, laptops with APUs in them, or even desktops with APUs. These could be mobile devices. This could be anything that is essentially an x86 system or a system which would fit the definitions to run this particular system, um, to run this particular report. Does that mean that NVIDIA? are losing to AMD? No, not in terms of discrete sales. We've all seen the figures to tell us otherwise. However, it does tell us that in a wider scene, in a, a wider, you know, a wider discussion, not just gaming, AMD are doing pretty well. Um, the problem is, of course, that NVIDIA just recently, with the Pascal architecture, has really hit a home run. And when it comes to gaming, they've had a level of dominance of late. And that brings us to the next story. Now, when it comes to Vega, there are two trains of thought. One is it was a disaster. And the train of thought that I come in is it's a good architecture just with some problems. Now, what I find quite telling, however, with Vega is that the custom AIB cards have just been let's say, late to the party. I think that would be the kindest way to describe it. And there have been a few GPUs that we've seen either teased or, you know, pretty much at the point where they're on the market. Back in the start of November, we saw XFX tease their first custom uh, Vega cards. We see at the moment, news is littering the internet with power colours, Radeon RX Vega uh, 64 Red Devil. And I have to say, it does look quite nice. I mean, the actual PCB itself is pretty small. You can see that a lot of the actual circuitry is pretty much just crammed into a small area. However, uh, there is a story currently doing the rounds on uh, PC Games N. And the author who actually puts this story together uh, is explaining the absence of uh, custom Vega cards. And honestly, <coughs> I guess because I've had a number of people asking me about custom Vega cards, I figure I can kind of chime in with this. So, why is it that custom Vega cards have not been kind of, well, normal at the moment? Why are they, why are they taking so long? Well, it's just very tough to sell them to customers. We've heard, of course, of multiple different iterations of the actual uh, dies of Vega itself, and the problem with that is it's very difficult to produce coolers. Now, not only that, but you've also got the cost of the actual components. No, I'm not referring to the coolers, I'm not necessarily referring to the power, you know, distribution and the the PCB, I'm actually referring to the chips themselves. Not only has the number of them been fairly limited, but HBM2 has been extremely expensive. And because these stacked memory modules come at a fairly hefty cost, and they're in short supply, AMD have not been able to supply a large abundance of those, and that, by the way, is me once again putting it quite kindly, 
to developers. Therefore, board, board partners have been very wary of launching custom cards because they're just very well aware that they're just not going to either be able to produce them in large enough quantities or it's going to cost them an absolute bomb to be able to basically produce them at a decent clock speed. And that's the other issue. Um, you can do Googling on this yourself. It's just that AMD have had, um, obviously, the Vega 56 and the 64s. And once again, I think the 56 is a very good card. However, certain AIBs have gone on record and said that they're just not that confident that they can, let's say, guarantee a particular clock speed. Now, once again, this is not necessarily a bad thing against Vega itself. I just think that uh, they should probably have not gone with HBM2 for the customer variants. Now, do I think, once again, I'm going to go on record and say I don't think Vega is a bad card. In fact, I think Vega is a very nice GPU. The problem with Vega is the availability and pricing. And pricing for this card has gone up and down, up and down, up and down. The issue is that you have a card which is not that much faster than, let's say, the GTX 1070 or 1070 Ti, but in many cases the pricing is either cheaper or considerably more expensive depending on the region you're from and you know some people are going to say well i can buy you know a vega 56 at you know rock bottom prices and others in their region are getting absolutely uh, shafted in terms of performance vega 56 in particular is very impressive if you overclock it <coughs> as i've said before if you overclock it it does compete very well with a gtx 1080 the problem is with NVIDIA absolutely steamrolling it at the moment with multiple graphics card releases and with the GTX 1080 in fairly abundant supply. And one of the benefits, of course, of the 1080 is it's not really been smacked with the mining craze because with the mining craze, people have been somewhat avoiding the GTX 1080 because the high latency of GDDR5X and it's not that conducive to mining. I mean, obviously you can technically mine on it, but you actually get better performance with the 1070 or what have you. So people typically don't like to pick the 1080. So it just kind of is what it is. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of a weird set of uh, topics today. But uh, as I said, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.